I have done a lot of horrible shit while working here at the half-priced voodoo shop. But this tops everything before. I bet some of you have been wondering about that one girl who asked for a love potion. Well, I had forgotten about her until she came running to the shop in the middle of the night. I was doing my usual thing in the middle of the night when the shop was closed. Curled up on the floor behind the shop and contemplating my horrible sensation. Then a loud thud came onto the door, followed by a bunch of panic knocking. I popped my head from behind the counter and raised a brow. Positive to having the button's eyes is that I've got incredible night vision. So even with the lights off, I was able to see clearly the girl knocking on the door. I sighed and pulled myself onto my feet and forced myself to walk over to her. We're closed ma'am. I told her, looking at her and noticing that she was covered head to toe in blood. Not an unusual sight at the shop I have to say. I can hear you guys yelling at me for not helping her right away and look man, I'm a fucking voodoo puppet. I can only give so much of a shit anymore. I need you to help me. I came here before and asked for a love potion, and ever since then the guy I've been dating has turned into an absolute psycho. She screamed, smashing her hands on the window harder and yanking on the locked door some more. I sighed, looking at her. All sales are final. I said, thinking for a second and looking back over to the office and then back at her, sighing harder and opening the door for her, letting her in and locking the door again. Turning the lights of the shop on I looked at her with crossed arms. Look I can't do much for you. I'm in a much worse situation than you. Fuck you man. My boyfriend just tried to fucking cut my head off. She screamed at me, shaking as she hugged herself. It must have been the first time she took a really good look at me cause, when she looked at the stitches all around my neck she took a step back. Okay. Maybe we're in the same boat. She mumbled a bit. Yeah. Look I can take you down to the basement to hide from your boyfriend, but you cannot tell my boss this. Otherwise, we're both gonna end up fucked in the ass. I explained to her, walking over to the basement door and pulling on it. Groaning when I realized that it was locked. Should've figured that. Okay, maybe not. Look you can just chill here with me until the morning, and then we can both deal with whatever the hell happens. I said, exhausted from everything. Being unable to sleep is terrible. Thanks. I'm Liz. I think your boss already said my name. She offered her hand, and I shook it. Not minding the blood on her. Travis. So what's with the blood? Murder your boyfriend. I asked her, walking over to the counter and offering her the rocking chair I'm never allowed to use during working hours. She sat down and started rocking a bit. No. I did stab him a shit ton of times, but as I was leaving the house he stood up and rushed towards me. So I just ran and ended up here. She explained, rubbing her arms and pulling away, when she seemingly finally got a good look at herself. You wouldn't happen to have an extra change of clothes? She asked me. Yeah in the basement, unfortunately. I said with a chuckle looking around the shop, the voodoo dolls obviously not happy that I brought somebody into the shop after hours. I responded with a middle finger to them. Judgmental assholes. We kinda just sat in silence until she finally broke it with a question I knew was coming. So what happened to you? She asked me. I looked at her with a raised brow and started chuckling. Clearly, she doesn't read my posts. I walked over to behind the counter and produced the missing person poster my parents had given King Creole. I handed it to her. That used to be me I said with only a hint of sadness. Crossing my arms and leaning against the wall next to her. She took it and looked down at it, then back to me. You look better with messy hair. She said. Causing the first genuine smile I've had in a very long time I feel. Ever since being turned into a voodoo puppet, my hair has been forced to be down and perfectly combed. Opposed to my normal messy hair that I loved. Getting a compliment on my old hair was uplifting, to say the least. Thanks. I hope I can get it back someday. I sighed, looking over to the door and standing up straighter when I saw a figure shambling towards the shop. Hey. Does your boyfriend usually walk on all fours? I asked her, keeping my buttons trained on the figure shambling over to us. Uh. No. What kind of question is that? She asked, obviously confused, but soon shrieked when something started knocking hard on the front door. She stood from the rocking chair and started to back up into me, smearing blood onto my suit. That's him. She screamed. Figured. I sighed as the creature started slamming onto the front door. 
To say he was a human is like comparing me to a normal human at this point. His face was split straight down the middle, and he had plenty of teeth inside of the crevice where his brain should have been. He was also clearly unaware or uncaring of the fact his guts were spilling out all over the sidewalk. You said you just stabbed him. I asked Liz as I leaned over the counter to search for a weapon. I had to make sure he was dead. Clearly, I should have done fucking more. She said in a panic, producing a knife from the hoodie she was wearing. I looked at it and then at her and shrugged. I got nothing against women carrying something to defend themselves with. You have any kind of magic shit that can kill him? She asked me as I calmly looked into the box of things I kept behind the counter. Look, I'm just a slave at this point. I dunno if you noticed, but I'm being held up by magic strings that disappear into the ceiling. Not much I can do in that department. I sighed, pulling out Officer Kilpatrick's gun from the box and slamming it onto the counter. Here, see if that'll help I said, walking over to get King Creel out of his office. Liz. Let me in, I love you. I'm sorry about attacking you. The creature growled, slamming its split head against the glass front door harder and harder. Starting to crack the glass of the front door, causing Liz to quickly pick up a gun and fumbled with it for a second as she aimed it towards the creature. I knocked on Creel's office and waited for him. Tapping my foot on the floor as I waited. Except he didn't come out, which was odd to me. I tried again only for him not to respond either. Trying to open it I found it locked as well, and I groaned. I know for a fact he doesn't sleep since I don't fucking sleep. So where the hell was he? Bad news Liz. Looks like we're on our own with this one. I sighed, walking back over to her and going back to the box for something to arm myself with. Showing Liz how to turn the safety off as she panicked about it not firing. How can you be so calm about this? She asked terrified, only getting a shrug back from me. In my defense at this point I kind of expect this to happen. Finding the gun from one of the robbers I checked the cylinder and found three bullets still unfired. Great. One for the monster, one for Liz, and one for me. That was a plus I guess. Alright. So we fire as many bullets as we can into him. Is that really our only plan? I asked her, sitting down on the rocking chair with a huff as I rubbed my aching legs. Standing up for so many hours really does a number on them. Unless you have a better idea. She said, still pointing the pistol towards the creature that used to be her boyfriend. Who was rapidly putting more cracks into the glass door with each hard smash of his head. Well, at least he was dedicated to that. You guys gonna help out? I asked the voodoo dolls. Turning my attention towards them, but as usual, they just gave me a blank look back whenever I tried to talk to them. Nope. Got no ideas here. I shrugged, clocking the hammer back on the revolver and aiming it at the creature. We would have had a last stand there if I hadn't noticed the voodoo doll template on the counter. Ever since being turned into a puppet, I had forgotten about my little companion. He seemingly hadn't forgotten about me though as he was holding King Creel's key. Guess he wasn't such a little shit after all. Taking Liz by the arm I pulled her over to the basement door and unlocked it, quickly pushing her in and walking in myself as her boyfriend broke through the door. I can't see a thing. She huffed, flinching when the creature started pounding the door on the other side. But I gave her a pat on the shoulder, and took her hand as I led her down the flight of stairs. Able to see rather well down here. Don't worry. If Mary can't get through that door, he sure as hell isn't either. I sighed, leading her to the basement and flicking on the lights. Turning around when she screamed at all the dead bodies and human remains. Oh and Mary eating another customer. Hey, Mary. Don't mind us. I said, waving to her. He won't be happy that you brought someone down here. She pointed out, wiping her bloodstained mouth and looking at the girl I had brought down here. When is he ever happy about something I do? I asked back. Reaching down and handing Liz some random articles of clothing. Plus I don't even think he's here. I knocked and he didn't come out of his office. I pointed out, leaning against the cold stone walls of the basement. HM, well just make sure she's out of here, before he comes back. The porcelain woman said, going back to her meal with the same vigor, that we walked in on. Liz was obviously confused and scared, but I assured her that Mary was mostly harmless. Nodding she went over to the corner, and changed out of her bloody hoodie and jeans into another hoodie and jeans. Go figure. What are we going to do about Trevor? She asked after a decent period of silence. I looked at her with my button eyes and sighed, running my hands through my hair, and thinking it over. 
there was a chance that the voodoo dolls would deal with it. But I had only ever seen them do anything after King Creole had been attacked by the rookie cop. I guess wait is the only thing we can do. I shrugged. I really didn't have any ideas. If I couldn't even get out of this place, how the hell am I supposed to come up with some kind of way to kill a boyfriend turned evil undead creature? She wasn't exactly happy with this option, but there wasn't much we could do about it anyway. So, I'm guessing your parents didn't find you? She asked me. The subject wasn't the most ideal thing I wanted to talk about at this moment. But I figured there wasn't much else to talk about. No. Creole made it, so the police won't investigate my disappearance. My parents came here to ask him about me, and I couldn't do anything to alert them that I was here. I sighed, looking away and over to the corner. Well. If I get out of here, I'll tell them. Liz said. Causing me to look over to her. Would she do that? More importantly what would even happen after that? Creole wouldn't just let me go. He'd cause my parents more suffering, and by extension me. I still remembered his threat to me. No. I can't risk Creole from hurting them. Me and Mary are working on a way to get out of here. I just need some time to think. I sighed, rubbing my face and scratching at my buttons. But right now, I gotta make sure he doesn't find you. Let's just say he doesn't like people knowing that Mary exists down here. I said, walking over to her and taking her hand as I led her back to the stairs. I don't hear him. She whispered to me. And she was right. I didn't hear Trevor either. So turning off the basement light we both started upwards towards the basement door. Silent as silent could be. Reaching it I placed my ear against the door and heard wet smacking. The usual sound I heard when someone was getting beat to death in the shop. Stay here, I told her, opening the door quickly and closing it behind me. My hunch was correct when I say Creole beating the living shit out of Trevor with his cane. His gaze turned to me and his scowl quickly turned into a wide smile. Travis. Dear me, I thought this disgusting creature had gobbled you up. He chuckled, walking over to me and tussling my hair. Already I could feel my body tense up and my brain lose control as the strings took over. No need to worry about me, sir. I said happily. Praying to whatever fucked up God existed for me not to say that Liz was hiding in the basement. He looked me over and looked over to the basement door. No. Please no. You're hiding something from Lil Almi aren't you Travis? He asked me with a smile. Walking past me and over to the basement. I held my breath as he turned the knob. Only for it to not open. He'd scat and reached into his coat pocket. Only he didn't find the key in there, or any of his other pockets. What the hell? He asked in annoyance. Looking at me and coming over. Grabbing me by my collar. Now you listen here, boy. He snarled, his yellow teeth sharpening back into fangs. You tell me what the fuck you hid down there. He snarled, causing me to gulp and try once again to bash my face against the voodoo monsters. But it wouldn't work this time. A girl, sir. I said, in that stupid kisses tone. The one who brought this creature with her. I choked out as I started to squirm away from him. Fighting my hardest to not fall under his stupid spell. Is that so? Then, it must be Miss Elizabeth. He asked with a coup. Pushing me away and producing a needle from his pocket. He inserted it and with a flick of the wrist opened up the door. Only to get met with a shot right into his face from Liz. The voodoo man stumbled backward and tripped over the bleeding corpse of Trevor. Run. I managed to choke out as the strings loosened and I seemingly was able to have control over myself again. She nodded quickly and started booking it towards the entrance. Only for her ankle to be grabbed by Creole's gloved hand and causing her to fall flat on her own face. I tried to assist, but the strings instantly took their hold on me once again. Well, Ms. Liz. Seems your potion didn't turn out so well. Creole chuckled, the hole in his head dripping and the black substance that usually came out of his mouth. Allow me to remedy that. He snarled pulling her closer as she tried in vain to escape him. Shooting bullet after bullet into his head. Travis. Help me. She screamed, looking at me with sheer terror in her eyes. I wanted to. I wanted to force myself to fucking move. But I was stuck there in place, just forced to look blankly at her. Travis. Get this bitch down to the basement. I'm going to teach her some respect. Creole snarled at me as he finally managed to pin Liz to the floor and slap the empty gun away as she tried to bash him with him. The strings pulled tight once again. I fought as hard as I could guys. 
I swear I did. But the strings pulled me over and forced me to pull Liz up and hold her against me, as I began dragging her to the basement. Creole stood up and dusted himself off as he chuckled. Walking along with me as I pulled Liz screaming and kicking down to the basement. I helped Creole strap her to the table. He scolded me for letting someone in after hours, and deemed that the punishment I would receive was to help him with what he was going to do. He sliced the clothes off her, and he took great pleasure in the fact that she was wriggling and screaming all the while. He hummed all the while and stepped away to the corner of the basement to look for the item he would use on Liz. He came back with pieces of porcelain. My heart sank instantly when I saw that. He placed each piece onto her and mumbled something to himself. Liz began screaming louder as the porcelain began to sizzle onto her skin and soon morphed perfectly on top of it. He repeated this pattern, panel by panel replacing every inch of her skin just like Mary. Guess this is what he did to her. When he finished, Liz was completely porcelain. But unlike Mary, she couldn't move. She simply darted her eyes back and forth tears streaming down her shiny pale face. But he wasn't done yet. He looked over at me and smiled white as he snapped his fingers. And before my eyes, she started shrinking. Just like when he turned someone into a voodoo doll. In no time flat, she was the size of a porcelain doll, and he picked her up carefully. Travis, Travis, Travis. He sighed at me, bringing the doll of Liz over to me and holding on to it as he tapped my cheek with his gloved hand. You shouldn't fall in love. You'll just end up in a million pieces. He explained, dropping Liz in front of me. I screamed as loud as I could in my mind as my body just stood there and watched as she hit the floor and shattered into a million pieces. A million bleeding pieces. Clean the mess upstairs. We open in a few hours. He said, leaving me to stand over Liz's dead pieces. Liz was my only chance of escape. But besides that, she was just a poor girl who wanted to be loved. And this is how she ended up. Mary said there was no way she could have survived. The only reason she survives his beatings is because he leaves enough of her intact to be rebuilt. There's no fixing Liz and it's all my fault.